it's not you know crazy narrow, it's not crazy snug, but it's on the snugger side of things. Wide fit. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and today we have another trade-off shoe. We had the Speedland SL PDX uh, last week and today we have the ASICS Fujilite 2. It's not a trail shoe that I had on my radar to be very honest. First of all, you know that I'm not running um, a lot on the trail, so I'm reviewing mostly road shoes. But top for running suggested that I do a review of this one. They said it's really interesting, really different, and it was worth the review. So they sent me a pair. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, I didn't pay for this pair. Uh, and you can actually find your pair of uh, ASICS Fujilite 2 discounted on top for running if you're in the EU. There's a link in the description with the discount code, so um, go check it out. And maybe it's actually worth waiting, you know, a, a few days uh, because top for running will have their Black Friday um, offers. So maybe you can find this pair discounted even more um, during this period. Specs, uh, we're looking at 292 grams in my size US 11 EU 45 for this shoe. Uh, it's it's light. It's really light and it, it runs light. I'm holding it a bit weird because there's uh, quite some <laughs> some mud on it, but hey, it's a trail shoe after all. 292 grams, good weight. Drumita score, very interesting. It's uh, in the low 40s or high 30s, 39 if I remember well for that flight foam, EVA foam. I would have said 35, maybe even 34. 39, okay, fair enough, um, but it's it's softer than that. We'll come back to that in the ride, but it's softer than 39 for sure. Outsole, I think I measured it in the 60s, nothing outstanding there, but you know, outsole is certainly a very good feature of this shoe. We'll come back to that as well. Width of the platform, we're looking at something quite narrow. Um, it's not as narrow as the Speedland SL PDX, uh, for which you can check my first impression review here, upper right hand corner, should you wish to. Very interesting one, lots of innovation there. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. So not as narrow as the Speedland SL PDX, but quite a narrow fit. Um, certainly more narrow than everything like, you know, Nova Blast, Mov3, Boston 10, the very popular road uh, daily trainers, road shoes from 2021. And that translates to the fit. Um, we'll do the fit right now. It's I would say a snug fit. It's not, you know, crazy narrow, it's not crazy snug, but it's on the snugger side of things. Wide fit, stay away, I would say. This is my, my little advice here for you out there with uh, wider fit. Stay away, I'm not sure this is gonna be for you. Last but not least, drop. So <laughs> this is quite funny. ASICS claims uh, 18 millimeters in the heel, 14 in the forefoot. I mean, you don't have to be any shoe expert to, to see that it's more than 18 here and 14 in the forefoot. Um, so many people out there measured it at 30 in the heel, 26 in the forefoot. I did not do the measurement myself, but I'm quite sure it's in that uh, ballpark. So let's call it 30 in the heel, 26 in the forefoot, four millimeters drop. It's interesting, four millimeters, a bit less than the Speedland SLPDX at five. Same as the more V3 for you out there who uh, like the more as their uh, daily trainer. And it's way less than many shoes. I'm actually gonna do a stat at the end of the year for all the shoes I reviewed and try to see what's the most popular drop. And I think eight, maybe that, that number. In any event, four millimeters, you know, I think, it's, I think it's good that such shoes exist. And for a shoe that is very agile, very fast like this one, four millimeters makes sense. Let's come back to that in the right of the shoe. Uh, but so fit, as I mentioned, on the snugger side of things, upper isn't anything fantastic. It's quite comfortable, quite plush, but you know, not super breathable, not super water resistant, not super um, protective in the cold. Now that it's a bit colder outside, that's also one thing to take into account. Maybe it's better for summertime. That's how I would probably recommend to use it, summer or mid-season. 
but once it's getting cold, it's not super um, water resistant, super uh, you know hot in the in the shoe. So um, that's something you may want to consider. No gusset on the tongue, and it's a bit of a bummer. I think that this shoe would work even better the midfoot lockdown with a gusset, and the ride would be improved with that as well. Uh, here, the the toe bumper that that protection, you know, against um, more technical terrains, rocky stuff isn't outstanding. It's interesting, the feature, it's the same as on the Trabuco Max that we reviewed on the channel, um, but it's not fantastic. So upper is not my favorite part of the shoe. It's not a disappointment, but nothing, nothing crazy. There's a, a little uh, pocket here on the tongue so that you can put your laces in. Nice, but not super necessary. The heel is actually maybe the best part of the, of the upper. Uh, nice lockdown, nice heel pocket, heel cup. Um, quite rigid, quite stout as you can see, so if you're looking for something with more give to it, stay away. But for trail, I think a nice cup, a nice lockdown in the heel is very important. And here ASICs, um, they have it. Midsole, flight foam, EVA foam. On the paper, it sounds as, you know, a boring, or not boring, but nothing super exciting. Just, a, um, you know, another ride, uh, like, you know, comfortable, but nothing crazy. It's not. It's it's way more exciting than this. It's actually a bit bouncy, which I did not expect. Softer than I expected, and even softer than I expected once I had the Durometer number 40, remember? So I was surprised when I took the shoe out for the first time, and I was like, ooh, okay, this is actually softer than, than what I had in mind, uh, which was pleasant. Very, and now I know I'm gonna do a mistake, but I'm gonna bend it. Very, very, very flexible. Um, the torsion is, yeah, and here I have all the mud going down on me. Good job, Alex. But I, I knew it. So yeah, quite a lot of flex to the shoe, both um, in, in, you know, in both directions, like this, and also the, the torsion. Quite a lot of it, so more for the neutral runners. But the flex in the forefoot, I think, makes it very interesting for... Even I did some heel reps in the shoe, which I never do in, in, in trail shoes, or not never, but not very often. And it works very well. It's a good climber because of that flex in the, in the forefoot. And overall, the soft ride, a bit of bounciness, that ability to climb well. Very versatile shoe. You can go from your house to the trails on the roads and you will be fine with it. And it's a fast shoe. Uh, I think, you know, the low weight and that interesting version of flight foam, EVA foam here on the um, Fuji Light 2 makes it a, a, a speed shoe, a fast shoe, a shoe with which you can do some speed work, cross country races, why not? Although um, I think you have better options, but in any event, shorter races on the trails like 10K, 20K, 30K on the on the trails, and then you may wanna switch to the Trabuco Max, for instance. Yeah, I think the, this shoe has a, has a, a nice, uh, you know, uh, place in people's rotations, in, in people's, you know, uh, shoe choices for trail running. So um, quite nice. The outsole, ASICS grip, it's a very good outsole. Four millimeters um, of lock depth. One could think this is not enough, six would be better, but it, act it actually works quite, quite well. I, you know, I live in Brussels, so I did not take the shoe in some very technical terrains, uh, just some, some forests, some, some parks, some mud, but that's pretty much it. Still, the, the uh, outsole did a good job. I'm pleased with the shoe, more than I expected. It's not a big crush uh, either. Is that because I reviewed the Speedland SLPDX last week? Maybe, but you know, I'm actually happy that I tried it because I think it's a very good reference point. And it's a shoe that I can see myself recommending to some of you in the comments when you ask about some, some specific shoes for the, for the trails, for your needs on the trails. I can see myself recommending this. So nice that I was able to try it. Price points, I may be wrong here, but I think it's 130 euros or 140. I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this. You can correct me in the, in the comments. In any event, it's a very good price point, very competitive, 130, 140, very good. And you have um, a very good uh, you know, product for that price. And overall, for, you know, if you compare it to some other shoes that are more expensive, with this, you can do many things and I think it's a, it's a you know, good value for money. That's it uh, for today with the Fuji Light 2. Again, you know, lightweight, responsive, a bit of bounciness, uh, runs lighter than, than the weight. The foam is softer than the Durometer score may suggest. Pleasant surprise and a shoe that I think could work very well for uh, faster trail runs, faster trail races 
and you can even use it as, as a commuter, as a shoe uh, for road running, why not? Uh, but very interesting, thanks to top for running for sending this out. Go in the description and uh, check their website, use the discount code to get a little discount on your shoes. Thanks a lot for watching today guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your run today, should it be on the trails or on the roads, enjoy your rides. Go beyond your limits and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.